Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a continued fraction or an infinite expression. We have 2 plus 2 divided by 2 plus 2 divided by 2 plus so on and so forth. And this goes on forever and we're going to find the value of this infinite expression. We've done similar problems before, but before we get into the evaluation, let's go ahead and talk about something similar to this. You hopefully know that if we used 1s instead of 2s, then we would get 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over so on and so forth. And this is equal to actually 1 plus root 5 over 2, and that could be defined as the golden ratio, or you can just use phi for this particular value. This is a very special constant that appears in a lot of different places, including Mona Lisa. You know, um, there's a lot of good ratios you can find in nature. Anyways, so my question is, if we just replace these ones with twos, are we just doubling this expression so that the value of this becomes basically 1 plus root 5? So that's going to be my question, and we'll try to answer that question by finding the value of this expression. Okay? So before we get into, again, some um, crazy stuff, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, initial value. So we're going to write this as a sequence. So here's how we're going to define it. So I have a sequence a sub n. This is the sequence. And I'll, I'm going to define the first term as 2. And to find the second term, I'm going to basically do the following. I'm going to go ahead and write this as 2 plus 2 divided by 2. So here's how it goes. And then I will take this and then write it as 2 plus 2 divided by this expression right here, which is 2 plus 2 divided by 2, and so on and so forth. In general, we can write it as follows. a sub n plus 1 equals 2 plus 2 divided by a sub n. So this clearly, hopefully, defines my sequence because I gave you the first term and then how to get the next term from there. Make sense? And by listing all these terms as a sequence, if the sequence has a limit, then that limit is going to be the value of our expression. So that's how it's defined. Let's go ahead and take a look at some values. For example, what happens to the second term? 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is 3. Since this is a 3, the next one is going to be 2 plus 2 thirds, which is 8 thirds. I'm going to show you some numerical values towards the end, but these are basically the first three values, and hopefully you can make an assumption with this. So if you go back to our assumption and look at 1 plus root 5, root 5 is about, I would say, maybe 2.3, 2.2. If you add 1 to it, you're going to get something like 3.2, but this looks like this is going to be less than that. But are the values going to increase? Are they going to decrease? They're going to switch back and forth, and what's going to happen at the end? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, since we define this this way, we can go ahead and do the following. We can actually write this expression one more time as 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 2 over dot, dot, dot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call this expression x, assuming that it converges to a certain value. Okay? Now, what happens if you have something like this, right? Well, when you have an expression like this, notice that the whole denominator is going to look like this. 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 2 over dot, dot, dot. And if you compare it to the original expression, you're going to notice that it's actually the same thing as x. So this is the same thing as x. Therefore, this also equals x if this has a limit. So I'm going to write it as an equation, 2 plus 2 over x equals x. And then this gives us a quadratic equation after multiplying both sides by 2. Now, I mean x, not by 2, of course. So this gives us 2x plus 2 equals x squared. And then you can complete the square or use the quadratic formula, whatever you want, to find the values of x because there's going to be two values. And then by adding 1 to both sides, we get the following. And then this gives us x minus 1 squared equals 3. And as you know, there are two numbers whose square 
equals 3 and those numbers are root 3 and negative root 3. And the x values from here is basically going to be x equals 1 plus root 3 and you can call that x sub 1 if you want and x sub 2 is just going to be 1 minus root 3. Notice that 1 minus root 3 is less than 0 and our expression is supposed to be positive so I'm going to go with 1 plus root 3. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at this from a limit perspective. Whenever you define a sequence as follows, a sub 1 is equal to 2, and then a sub n plus 1 is equal to 2 plus 2 over a sub n. So that's how we defined our sequence. And if this sequence has a limit, again, the proof is a whole different story, but if it has a limit, then all is subsequences is going to be uh, converging to the same limit. In other words, if you take the limit on both sides, limit of a sub n plus 1 is going to equal the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity. Make sense? Now, using that idea, basically, we can call this limit L. And then when you take limits on both sides, limit as n approaches, n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 equals limit as n approaches infinity of 2 plus 2 over n. And then this is going to be 2 plus 2 over limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. And as you know, they are the same and they're both equal to L. So now we can replace this with L and we can replace this with L. And when you evaluate this expression, you're going to get the exact same thing. Of course, you're going to get two values, but 1 minus root 3 cannot be accepted. So the answer is supposed to be 1 plus root 3. So now to answer the initial question that I raised, the answer is no. It's not going to be two times that. And you can kind of look at why this is not going to happen. But anyways, this is not 1 plus root 5. It is actually less than that. Okay? Uh, what happens if you double the golden ratio? So like when you have an expression like this, can I just double this? Is there a way to double it? Something else to think about. Okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at some numerical values that I'm going to show you. And at the end, we're going to look at the uh, actual limit. So... This is, again, one of the terms, 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 2 over 2. It is about 2.6 repeating, or you can call that 2.7-ish. And then the next one after that is going to be 2.75. Now, here's the thing. The values started with 2, remember, and then we went to 3, and then we kind of went through 2.66. So it went up, and then it went down, and it went up again. Is it going to keep going up, or is it going to oscillate? That's a good question, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at one more value. As you see here, the value goes down and eventually it's going to give you square root of 3 plus 1, which is about 2.73205080757. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.